So the second part in which we say uh, molecular for relative molecular formula and relative formula mass. How relative molecular formula is different? Relative molecular formula is actually a term which is used for molecules specifically. And relative formula mass is actually used for the compounds, ionic compounds, because for ionic compounds, what we have, we don't have uh, like actual one, like if we say potassium fluoride, so it's not like one potassium and one fluorine. So it's not like we have one potassium and one fluorine, we'll have multiple potassium and fluorine. Like there will be a positive ion, then a negative, then we'll have a positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. So these positive and negative ions are there. The ratio between them, like one potassium to one fluoride, the ratio is one is to one. So this ratio is one is to one. That's why we say that potassium fluoride, uh, the formula mass is Kf. Then the next one, 0 0.095 gram of a gaseous element. So we have a gaseous element and it occupies 60 cm cube at room temperature and pressure. Determine the number of moles of this element. Because we have the volume, a gaseous element is there. We want to determine the moles there. We have the mass as well, but because we don't know its molar mass, so we cannot work out. So we'll use a formula that moles of a gas is equals to volume of a gas in decimeter cube divided by 24. So volume is in cm cube to convert into de decimeter cube. It should be divided by 1000. So it will be 0 0.06 and 0 0.06 divided by 24. So we get 2.5 exponent minus three. These are the moles of element Y. The next is calculate the relative molecular uh, mass of uh, mass of a molecule because relative molecular mass means we need the mass of the molecule so how we work out the relative molecular mass we use a formula that moles equal so we'll use a formula that moles equal mass in gram divided by the molar mass Moles we worked out, which was 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3. Mass in gram, it's given in the question, which was which is 0 0.095. And moles, uh, relative molecular mass, we don't know. We just cross multiply. So relative molecular mass is 0 0.095 divided by 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3. So when you divide, you get the total mass of a molecule, 38. So which element, which is a molecule and having a total mass of 38, so we, we have to check the periodic table. The mass of a molecule should be 38, not mass of the atom. So first thing you will check the site where you will find the uh, non-metals. Here you will find the non-metal when you draw the stairs between the group three. So these, this region you will find the non-metal. Which non-metals are gases? The first thing, group eight, all are gases. So first group eight, all are gases. But group eight, we cannot select group eight. Why we cannot select group eight? Because they mentioned molecular formula. Like group eight does not exist as a molecule. They exist as atoms, all of them. So it cannot be any element from group eight. Then we are left with the elements which we are left. We are left with nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine. These are the elements which we are in fluorine. But what is the mole molecular mass of a nitrogen? One nitrogen is 14, so two nitrogen will be 28. What is the molecular form molecular mass of oxygen? One oxygen is 16, so two will be 16 multiplied by two makes 32. For fluorine, one fluorine is 19. 
but two fluoride fluorine atoms to make a molecule that will be 38. So which gaseous element has a molecular mass of 38? So that is fluorine. So you have to identify the element Y. So what is this element Y? Element Y is fluorine. Is it uh, clear this one? How we worked out the identity of the element from the molecular mass? Another question, uh, which is related to the empirical formula, 1.68 gram of a sample of a phosphorus was burned to form 3.8687 grams of phosphorus oxide. So this is phosphorus oxide and this is phosphorus. Calculate the empirical formula. So we need the empirical formula of oxide. So first we should know the mass of phosphorus and we should know mass of oxygen. The mass of phosphorus is 1.68. What about the mass of phosphorus, uh, ma mass of oxygen? So because this is a mass of phosphorus and oxygen and phosphorus is 1.68. So the mass of oxygen will be 3.87 minus 1.68. So when we subtract, we get 2.19. Now, whenever you're finding the empirical formula, your step one is divided by relative atomic mass. So for phosphorus, when you check the periodic table, it is 31. And for oxygen, it is 16. Atomic mass. Molecular mass is 32, but we divide by atomic mass. 1.68 divided by 31. What's the answer? 1.68 divided by 31. What is the answer? 0 0.054 and 2.19 divided by 16. What is the answer? 0 0.13, 137. Okay. 136, uh, four decimal places, three decimal places. That's fine. The second step, we divide by the smallest value in the combination. So which is the smallest value? 0 0.054, 0 0.054. This will be one and 0 0.136 divided by 0 0.054, 2.5. Whenever one of the values 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, what we do? We multiply them by two because we want the simplest whole number. We want the simplest ratio in a whole number. So the ratio will be two is to five. So it means two phosphorus and five oxygen. Don't round off in empirical formula. Don't round off your answers. Don't No need to round off in any stage. Write three decimal places or four decimal places. Don't need to round off here. Because sometimes if you round off, your final result will be different. That's why no need to round off in between. The final stage only it is rounded off. Or convert into a simplest ratio in a whole number. Another oxide of a phosphorus has an empirical formula of P2O3. One molecule of this oxide contains four atoms of phosphorus. Means the ratio between phosphorus and oxygen is 2 is to 3. If there are four phosphorus, how many oxygen should be there? The ratio should be 2 is to 3. If I have four phosphorus, how many oxygen? Six for oxygen. So it will be... The molecular, because the ratio is 2 is to 3. Like if 2 phosphorus, we should have 3 oxygen. Because that's an empirical formula, shows the simplest ratio. If we have one molecule, which contains 4 phosphorus, so how many oxygen should be there? You can write x, just cross multiply, 4 multiplied by 3, 12. And 12 divided by 2 makes 6. So it should be 6. So P4, O6 should be the formula. And then how to work out the molecular mass, relative molecular mass. So phosphorus is 31 multiplied by 4 plus oxygen is 16 multiplied by 6. So 16 multiplied by 6 makes 96 and 31. So 220 grams.
So using the empirical formula, you can also work out the total number of atoms in the molecular formula. Like if this was the same question and they say empirical formula is two is to three, how many mole how many, what will the formula of one molecule of oxide of phosphorus, which contain example, uh, five atoms. So if it was P5, how many oxygen should be there? If it is P5, how many oxygen? It, it cannot be a decimal. So example P6, otherwise it will be decimal. If it was P6, how many oxygen should be there? So it should have a nine oxygen. How nine oxygen? Because the ratio is two is to three. So if we have six phosphorus, X oxygen should be there cross multiply. Six multiplied by three makes 18 and 18 divided by two makes nine. So it should be P6, O9. The table gives the proton number of different elements proton, neutron, and electron, you can annotate on the screen. Answer the following questions using the information. Each particle may be used once, more than once, or not at all. Is an atom with the atomic number 12? Atomic numbers also shows a proton number, so that is right. Is an atom with a nucleon number 14? Nucleon number 14 means when you add proton and neutron, you should get 14. So 16 plus 8 makes 14. Is an ion with a positive charge. To be a positive charge, it should have more proton than electrons. So this will be a positive charge. Has only one electron in the outer shell. So you have to write the configuration like this will be 2 comma 4. This will be 2 comma 8 comma 2. This will be 2 comma 8. This will be 2, 8. This will be 2, 8 and 1. So that is E is having one electron. D is an ion of an element. Identify the element and write its formula. We want to write the formula of the ion. Identify the element and write the formula. D is an ion. So you, you're not supposed, you have to write, a, identify the element that is oxygen. And what about how to identify the element by using a proton number. Proton number is the identity of an element. 8 proton means it's a proton number 8. That is for oxygen. So that's why it will be O minus 2. Why minus 2 is there? Because it has two extra electron than protons. Then this question is about uh, you have to learn the proton and nucleon number. Proton number means Number of proton in the nucleus. Nucleon number means sum of neutron and proton inside the nucleus of an atom. Why is hydrogen one one has atom is the only identical proton and nu nucleon number? Why? Because hydrogen have one proton, one electron, and zero neutron. No neutron. So when we add the proton and neutron, because this is one plus zero, so it will be one. That's why the Proton number, like the atomic number and the nucleon number is same for hydrogen. Complete the table to show number of proton, neutron and electron in an atom and ions. Fluorine, you have to check the periodic table. Fluorine is 9, magnesium 12, phosphorus is 15 and strontium is 38. So, so this will have 9 protons, 10 neutron. This will have uh, 12 is already given. So 12 and 14. What about phosphorus? Number of the protons in phosphorus? Fifteen protons. Take a difference. Thirty-one minus fifteen. So sixteen and eighteen and strontium. 
प्रोटॉन नंबर थर्टी एट And take a difference eighty seven minus thirty eight. That will be forty nine. Write the formula of a compound formed when fluorine um, formed from fluorine and magnesium. Look, the order of writing the uh, formula of a compound. Like we write group one element, then we add group two, group three until we reach group eight. So magnesium is there, group two we write first, and fluorine is group seven, so it will be MgF two. Write a formula of a compound form when strontium react with phosphorus, so it will be strontium phosphide. Just cross multiply the valencies. Proton, neutron, and electrons are subatomic particles. Complete the table to show the relative mass. Relative mass is a comparative mass. Actual mass of a proton is what? It is one point six into ten to the power minus twenty seven kg. One point six seven into ten to the power minus twenty seven kg. That's the actual mass of a proton. Actual mass of a neutron is also one point six into ten to the power minus twenty seven kg. An actual mass of electron is nine point one one. Into ten to the power minus thirty one kg, but when we take a ratio of their masses, so one one and one divided by one eight four zero, so electron is the lightest. And what about the charge? The this is also a relative charge, like comparative charge. Actual charge of a proton is one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen coulombs. An electron is also one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen coulombs. The only difference: protons are positive and electrons are negative. Rest when we take a ratio, it's plus. A neutron does not have any charge. Define the term isotopes, so they will have same protons but different neutrons. Atoms of the same element with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Explain why isotopes of a bromine have the same chemical properties. The chemical properties depends on the number of electrons in the last shell. So, because they have same number of electron in the last shell, that's why they have the same chemical properties. The table shows number of proton, neutron, and electrons in some atoms and the ions. Lithium, three proton difference. You take a difference: seven minus three, four. And three electron, sulfur sixteen and thirty four, so sixteen thirty four minus sixteen eighteen, and because it is negative charge minus two is there, so uh, because of eighteen electrons, like two extra electron. What about potassium? Potassium is proton number is nineteen, so we write nineteen. But what about the nucleon number? So nineteen plus twenty two makes forty one, and the charge. The charge is plus one. Why? Because it has more protons than electrons. So this was page twenty-six. Now we'll do some uh, paper uh, two questions. <clears throat> 